Right, so welcome everybody. You are our last session of this series. Thank you for attending the FY21 NIDA M. Lowy 21st Century Tracking and Monitoring System Training. For those that are returning to 21st Century this year, if you can remember during last year's compliance system trainings, it was emphasized that this year's system will come with a number of changes. This is primarily the reason why we've had some internal delays with rolling out the system just to make sure we got everything right before we opened it up to you all. But in the home stretch of this work with us doing things internally, um, we wanted to make sure that you had the information and tools necessary to navigate this new, more user-friendly system properly. And yeah. All right, so I want to begin by formally introducing myself um, to some. You've known me for a few years now. For others that may not know me as well, I'm Charmaine Davis Bay. I am a educational program specialist within the 21st Century program. Um, I am the compliance and monitoring system lead for our program, as well as a regional consultant for Northeast and Southwest regions. Um, in our training today, we have, I see Ludia Derillion. She is our grants manager. Um, you all have received communications from her. She also assists with approving um, programmatic revisions via CCIP, any pertinent documents with regards to uh, direct communication to our program managers um, in, in the bulk of our work also includes doing work with our contracts. Um, again, a lot of this you've known, um, got that from orientation, but it's always something I throw in there just to make sure you all know who is involved. Libby Lee's logging in. Um, Tabitha Palmer, our data coordinator, you also should be familiar with. She's um, uh, primarily working um, to manage our data, which includes work in the 21 APR system, um, and any um, information like our training um, attendance information, she's um, also um, tracking that as well. Um, I also want to do um, two uh, folks that have been helping me in this space um, if, with regards to finalizing this year's new monitoring survey, and that's Anita McGuire and Leona Escuza. And I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, but they are both. You're fine, Charmaine. Oh, thank you. Um, so they both have been supporting me. I'm on an agency-wide compliance system team where we have been testing out the system for months. Um, and, and once I've gotten access to our um, um, development environment to test out the system, I've been able to work with them just before we logged in today, um, just tweaking some last minute things. Um, and so um, just so you know, it's a little bit of work in behind the scenes, but these two women have been very helpful in us getting to where we are now. So I wanted to acknowledge you all both for being here um, today and also for your help with the system development. Um, so with this training, we are going to review in detail how to navigate the new ODE tracking and monitoring system, which is formally which it, which is a, a new system, but we formally called this process uh, the ODE compliance system. And we're going to also review each pertinent survey via your OD, OHID account. So some housekeeping items again, um, please, if you can, um, keep your camera off and mute yourself um, during the training as this improves bandwidth and keeping the presentation from slowing down or being delayed. Um, if you have a question at any time, uh, please use the raise your hand feature to be acknowledged or just drop um, your question in the chat and we'll do our best to check them throughout the training so you're not waiting the entire time for a response. Um, and also to ensure attendance is captured. Um, this is a smaller group, so we've just been capturing people as they have been logging in and Tabitha is on the back end doing that um, as people have um, logged in. Um, just making sure that we are good. Libby just logged in. Okay, so um, we've just been capturing information, but in previous trainings, we've been having people drop their name in the chat. So you're fine. If you didn't do that, we, we've captured that information. Um, so we have a lot to cover today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and using this system, there are three surveys you will need access to throughout the duration of your five year grant cycle. That's your first year implementation phase survey, your compliance and com performance assessment or CAPA survey, um, and your grant closeout survey. Today, we are going through the first year implementation and CAPA surveys only. 
because we do not currently have any grant closeout surveys. That survey will not be available until next year. And I will again be working with Anita and Leona and the development team to finalizing that. And it'll look very similar to what was in place previously for those that have closed out before. So, um, and I'll also be working with Nina to ensure that no additional questions need to be um, added at this time. Um, so, but today we're gonna just do the first two um, surveys so that each of you can walk away with general and specific knowledge of navigating the system and its contents. So before we get into the system itself, I wanted to review the systems you will need access to in order to be successful in using the tracking and monitoring system, which is what I'll be referring to either in full or just calling it monitoring in short. But we are coming away from it being compliance um, to now being housed in this new monitoring system. So to access anything with regards to this system or other applications, um, you need to have an OHID account. That is the new portal that we have been using since um, May of last year. It was formerly safe for those that have, haven't been around for a while. Um, the OEDS or Ohio Educational Directory System allows you to manage role assignments that will be used to access these various applications such as CCIP um, and the tracking and monitoring application. Speaking of the monitoring application, um, is the under the department's new tracking and monitoring system. So what you'll see today is what that application looks like in your OHID account. Um, at this time, you will not have access to it because it's still in development, but you will at least through this process, this training, be able to see what that looks like. Um, and also we ask that you be familiar with items such as the grantee or org name, the information retrieval number or your IRN, which is a six digit number associated with each organization or district, as well as a five digit grant number assigned by CCIP. Again, many of you are aware of these things because you use that in your registration, but we just want to make sure that you are mindful that these are things you need to be successful in accessing various systems um, and applications within the OHID. So speaking of, we're going to um, go into more detail regarding systems access, access for the Ohio Educational Directory System. So with that, the following roles can be given to the following roles can give role access to um, the ODE monitoring system. So these are the roles that you can um, reach out to the contacts under these roles to get um, assigned roles related to the monitoring system. That's CCIP authorized rep superintendent, CCIP fiscal rep treasurer, and the OH, the OEDS are administrator. Now we prefer as this should be your primary contact. Let me stress that. The OEDs are administrators who you should be contacting first to make any role changes or additions to your OEDs um, account. If for some reason that person is not responsive or you don't have anyone listed, you should go with the other two roles. They should be able to um, assign those roles as well. So with, with regards to required roles, in order to access and use the monitoring system, grantee staff must have one of the following roles in OED. So that is your CCIP authorized rep superintendent role, your CCIP fiscal rep treasurer role, and program manager. That is key. For multiple users, so let's say you are a program manager and you are managing multiple grants and you need to assign additional roles to access the system and to assist you with uploading documentation. Please have your OSR administrator issue the following roles in OEDs, data entry compliance, data view compliance. The difference is with data entry compliance, that person assigned will be allowed full access to view and upload documentation into the monitoring system, whereas your data view compliance role only allows view only access in the system. So last year I can recall a few folks reaching out and saying, hey, Charmaine, for some reason, I can't upload any documentation. And so after troubleshooting, it was determined that they, after looking in OEDs, it was determined that they had the data view entry role. So that's why they weren't able to do anything other than view what was in the system. So we worked to make sure that their OEDs, our administrator assigned them the appropriate role. So I would also encourage you um, to work with your OEDs our administrator to know so that you know the difference between the two roles if you ever need to assign anyone. Um, and also as a reminder for each district or organization that you need access to, 
um, such as our external evaluators that are working across multiple grants with multiple organizations or districts, or if you're a grantee who is partnering with another partner, another grantee um, district or CBO, you will need to be assigned the proper role for each affiliated grant that needs documentation in the monitoring system. So again, that's why it's important to make sure each year or several times a year that you're reviewing OS to make sure that the staff that need roles related to the system are giving those there are given those roles or those roles are updated. To clarify, you must have one program manager role in the monitoring system. We've noticed that when we pull our data um, for our program manager listing that we use that primarily Ludia uses to communicate with you all. Um, program managers. Sometimes we pull it and there's more than one program manager that comes out for a district or organization. We need one person per district or organization with the 21st century program manager role in OEDS. Um, that person is the active contact and so that's who we would use to communicate as needed as well as you having access to this system. But this does not restrict the number of additional role assignments that you would be using in the system. So those data entry compliance and data view compliance roles, you can assign as many as you need to for your organization or district. A suggestion that I would make is after today's training or sometime within the next few weeks um, as you begin to get acclimated to the system once it's live to go through OEDS for your org or your district and review your current roles to ensure that you have the proper staff in place and with access. And as a reminder, it is always best, um, it is always the program manager's responsibility to ensure that your documentation for first year, CAPA, or ultimately your grant closeout surveys is complete. Even if you assign a person from your organization or district to assist, you should always know what's going on with that process, checking into the system to ensure that everything is complete, that if following the steps provided today's training, that you are you know that you have completed the work and you're good to go before we go in to um, view from our end. So as you can see, this is for programmatic documentation for your first year implementation and your CAPA surveys. Um, for first year, um, you are required to submit that documentation no later than December 18th, 2020. Charlotte Jones Ward, who is also the Northwest and Southeast representative, will be conducting the first year implementation desk reviews. And as an act of courtesy, please email Char once you have completed your uploads and or if you need more time. And we say that because we understand normally you would have had several months to complete this documentation upload, but because of the timing of the system opening, we are still pushing that December 18th date, but we understand you may also need time as well to collect what you need to, for, to provide in the system. So please work with your um, pertinent contact. In this case, it will be Charlotte for anyone in their first year of their grant to let her know that you're going to need more time or that you have completed your uploads. As well, if you have a CAPA desk review, your documentation is also due in the, the tracking and monitoring system no later than December 18th. Your regional consultant, which for me is Northeast Southwest, Charlotte is Northwest Southeast, Ludia is Central. We will be conducting those reviews. And again, as an act of courtesy, please reach out to one of us if you have completed those reviews or completed your uploads or need more time. Please do that as soon as you know you need it so that way we're not looking around and expecting you to be finished, but you need more time. So any communication like that is greatly appreciated. As well as your fiscal documentation for those that are working with your designated treasurer to upload this um, pertinent documentation. Uh, Nina Pace is your contact and that documentation is also due December 18th. So to clarify, once your information is submitted, Char will be um, working with you for your first year implementation phase, or if you're working solely for your CAPAs, that's gonna be one of three regional consultants Nina will be connecting with you with any fiscal documentation related questions. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Looking in the chat to make sure there aren't any questions. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, 
So while discussing those that are under a CAPA review this year, I wanted to take a little time to discuss and provide some differentiation in receiving communication about those reviews. That will come for some via the department's collaborative or external monitoring review process. Yes, Tracy, that is correct. Currently, CAPAs are in their years two and four, or if you did not have an on-site review during your year two CAPA in FY20, if you did not have an on-site, then you would be doing that this year. Your desk review has been completed if you had a, a CAPA in FY20 and did not complete your on-site due to COVID. Hope that helps. So to explain what this is, um, for those that have a 21st century review only, or we call them non-overlaps, you will be receiving a direct communication from your regional consultant via email to determine dates and next steps for your CAPA um, desk and on-site review. We will be using the data we received via the 21st Century CAPA scheduling surveys to assist us with finalizing dates for those upcoming virtual and on-site reviews. And actually, as a reminder, if you have not produced uh, any information to go into the CAPA scheduling survey, um, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Those are due today. So I'm going to put that in the chat just in case you have not completed that survey. Um, and I apologize for stopping in the middle of the training to do this, but I wanted to make sure. So if you have not completed that, please feel free to do that um, as soon as possible so that we can continue um, ensuring that we have your information to consider as we are scheduling out your um, your on site reviews this year. If you are in the second or fourth year of your grant cycle or a grantee that did not have their on-site visit in FY20 due to COVID-19, you will receive an email from your regional consultant over the next few weeks. So on the other side of that, if you are a grantee with multiple reviews across the ages, across the department, such as with um, National School Lunch Program, Striving Readers, CACFP, you will be receiving an initial communication from your agency point of contact, which may or may not be someone from 21st century. But to be transparent this year, most of you will be receiving an email with regards to this process from a 21st century staff person because sometimes that's just how it ends up. And so um, again, there may be one or two of you that may have someone else reach out, but for some of you, it will be one of us, um, myself, Charlotte or Ludia. Included in the letter CC contacts is the SST director um, who will be listed on those email communications for those that are a part of this um, external monitoring review process. So this is for two reasons. One, for them to be aware of your CAPA um, on-site review, and two, for that connection regarding your building uh, and or district leadership team meetings and, and supports. Um, for our LEAs, that are in the room, you should be familiar with this person and being and working with them to be included in those conversations on the local level. For our CBOs, please connect with your LEA partner to better acclimate yourself with this person if you're not already familiar with them. And to make that connection with regards to the continuous improvement process, which I mentioned because our program, the 21st Century program, is under the Office of Improvement and Innovation, under the Center of Continuous Improvement. And so we emphasize the importance of this work, specifically in working with your SST contact to ensure that that process is always happening. And as an FYI, for those under this external collaborative monitoring review process, those letters, the initial communication letters, are scheduled to go out by November 30th. Please work with your superintendent, or executive director, if you are a program manager, please work with your superintendent or executive director to respond by the letter, respond to the date listed in the letter. Um, there is a link inside of that letter. Please work with your district superintendent or executive director to put your preferred dates for your on sites in order by preference. Um, once the ODE point of contact receives that information, a final schedule would then be sent out to your superintendent or executive director. Once the district organization receives that letter, I'm sorry, receives the email with the final schedule, your regional consultant will then follow back up with you directly regarding next steps on your CAPA. And to clarify, 
the final schedule, when that comes out, that's everyone that was included in the initial communication email, and that includes the program manager. So you will also get that email. And once that happens, typically we follow back up with you as a program manager specifically um, to follow up on next steps on your CAFA on-site and desk review. And as well, this information will also align with the final dates you provide us from your CAFA scheduling survey. We will do our, actually, we will do our best to align that. We're also working with other offices across the, the department. And so we will then, after we get the final uh, schedule back out to the district or organization, we'll follow back up with you to try to work within those dates that you provided us in the survey that's in the chat um, to ensure that we are um, meeting your needs on a local level as well. All right. Before we start walking through the steps of navigating through the system and before we walk live into the system, are there any questions? Stephanie, right on time. It says when I click and copy and paste it is showing the form does not exist. Hmm. I believe that is because it closed. So let me open this back up really quick and I apologize. I don't want to delay this training, but I feel like um, if you need to access it, I want to make sure that everyone has that access. Um, settings. Hmm. It's not closed, supposed to close until five. That's interesting. Let me. You know what? I think it's because I gave you the wrong link. Share. OK. Um, I'm going to delete what I posted. OK, Stephanie, let me know if that link works for you. That should be. The right link. Does anyone else have any questions before we proceed? Going once, going twice. OK, <laughs> all right, so let's move forward now before we log or I'm sorry. Oh, OK, thanks, Stephanie. Before we walk live into the system, I do want to take you through steps of entering into this new system. This process of our training looks different. I've actually taken time as I'm learning this as I was learning the system myself to break down this into steps. Um, this process kind of aligns with what you saw in the FY21 um, APR user guide. Because of the timing of the system being open, I was not able to provide a user guide, but that is on my uh, to do list going into FY22. So you will see this as part of a more detailed user guide next year. Um, I just wanted to at least give you something to work with again, along with this recording to ensure that you were successful in using the system this year and moving forward. And as a reminder, um, at this time, we are hoping next week would be the time we can access the system, but I will say that um, once I hear back from our development team on when we can access the system, that will be communicated to everyone. But in the meantime, we encourage you to use the information from this training. I'm also going to drop in the chat um, the blog post that has the first year implementation and CAPA survey questions, as well as site visit and on site visit checklist that you would be using um, depending on if you are um, in your CAPA review. So I'm dropping that in the chat right now. And um, that way you can use that um, for your reference. So let's go ahead and get started with this process. So step one, you're going to log into your OHID account. That's simple enough. Step two, under your sites and applications area, you're going to find and click on the monitoring application. And so it's not there currently. So if you try to go there, it's not going to show, it's not currently there. So, but I wanted you all to see what that looked like. So this is the monitoring application. Um, so this is the visual what that looks like. So just in case um, you'll have that. Step three, from the monitoring dashboard, you're going to select program. Now, this actually is a snapshot from last year's um, system, but it, it still looks the same, except instead of compliance, it says monitoring and instead of blue, it's red. So I will make a note to update. This is slide 14. Update from 
monitoring. Okay, so the final slide, you will see what it actually looks like from the system itself. So I wanted to make sure I noted that. Step four, you're going to select the district or organization um, that you need to access and then click on 21st Century Community Learning Centers. If you have access to more than one district or organization, you will see a message that indicates that there's more than one and then you need to use the drop down to select that organization or district that you need access to. Oh, and yes, and then click on 21st Century. Step five, under basic search, you're going to type in the district or organization name. If it is not auto populated due to it just being one organization you have access to. If you are accessible to multiple, then you will have to type in the name or the IRN and then click search. And you also want to be sure that the program period is in FY 2021. That will be the only year that is currently listed. But moving forward, I'm going to keep this in the training slides and just update the year. So you always would need to check if you're in the proper program uh, period. Under step six, under search results, you click on the district or organization name listed under the organization column. Step seven, you are to review the overview tab. Once you click on the organization or district name, and then review the following information. So here's the overview tab, and I actually broke up the section, so that's why it looks like that, but it's actually on one page. So you're going to look at your status, your survey status. Um, so that's going to be, and I'm going to back up. So over overall status, you're going to be looking at your completion, which should be either started, in progress, or completed. Um, under compliance, you either need you're going to be compliant or non-compliant. Um, consultants, we're looking at adding those per um, organization or district that are in the system this year. So you'll see that. The number of surveys. So your survey name is FY21 21st CCLC monitoring survey. But depending on if you have two first year surveys and one Kappa survey, that's three. Or you'll have a first year survey and three Kappa surveys, that's four. So that number will reflect the number of um, grant surveys you will have to complete. Um, your issues, this is where if you are issued a non-compliance, your corrective action, the number of corrective actions will, um, will be housed here, but it, it'll still give you the number of issues if you have any um, from that place. Your technical assistance, which is um, what is offered uh, as additional support for an indicator that you are uploading documentation for, or if there's something that we see or uh, view during your pre-site or on-site visit, we would note that under that, and you would then see the number here in the information here, but you will go to the technical assistance tab to access exactly in detail what that looks like. And then finally, this is, and I'm gonna note anything that has changed. So obviously this overview tab is new, but then when you get down to the utility counts, I want to note this as well. So anytime you upload a document, which you'll see, see as a new um, uh, feature, you are going to always know the total number that are uploaded. But you'll also know anything that's been up, uh, uploaded under 30 days. So anything recent is going to be anything that you've uploaded, updated or uploaded, I'm sorry, 30 days or less. The same thing for your comments, total number of comments here your recent comment count, as well as any recent communications that are um, added. So with the communications, um, what I will note here is that that comes from the department side. Anything that we note as far as any calls that we have with you, any emails received, we want to make sure that everything related to this process is housed within the system. So for example, if someone that I'm working with um, in their capital review reaches out to me um, to explain something or asks a question, I can always add under the communications icon that I emailed this person on this date and summarize, provide a summary of if I if necessary. And so again, this is a new component to the system. We just want to make sure that we are all connected and on the same page with this work. And so we're going to review all of those things in the next few slides.
selecting a survey. So once you get to step eight, you are going to click on the questions tab under the FY 2021 CCLC monitoring survey area, select on add survey to select the grant number that you need to add based on if you are under a first year implementation or capital review. So what I'll note here, and this is something I just experienced earlier, when you get to this point and you're looking to add your survey, I'm sorry, um, add your grant number, you will notice initially because this is a cloud-based environment, there are some slight delays. And so before you reach out and say, I don't see anything, Charmaine, can you help me? Give it a few minutes um, before the number that you need to access, popu does, uh, it, do it will eventually populate. Um, if you, after a few minutes, you don't see anything, then I would encourage you to reach out because there may be something I need to do on my end to ensure that you have access to the appropriate um, surveys. Once you get to step nine and you have populated the grant number, you're going to hit select start survey, changing the completion status to started. And from there, you can begin reviewing the indicators and questions and uploading that documentation. So talking about uploading your documents, once you get to step 10, you're going to select the section that you need to address under the LEA column. This is what you're going to be paying attention to. So for those in first year, you're going to either be referring to the fiscal component for first year, or you're going to be working in the first year implementation review, which is your programmatic questions. A gray box indicates that work has not been started or it is incomplete, which is what you will all experience once you get into the system. Under step 11, each indicator or question, you are going to select the check boxes for each piece of documentation that will be uploaded. Once you click any of those check boxes, you need to click at least one to upload any documentation for any work that you do. Clicking on that box is going to um, create a green box that appears and then disappears on your screen. So that your answer is saved. Will it will just kind of like magically pop up and it'll just go away. And so you'll see that when we get into the system. Um, and as a result of this cloud based environment where your answers are automatically saved, there is no longer a save button. Your answers and documentation is automatically saved as you complete work in the system. So this is a new, another new component of the system I wanted you to make note of as well. Step 12, now we're going to go into how to upload. This also is going to look a little different for those that have been in this using our systems for a while. My apologies. I need to drink. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So you're going to select OK, so you're at a question and you check off your box for the document that you want to upload. Instead of hitting icons that you've done previously, we're going to focus on what you need to do right now. So now you're going to click on the documents button that is underneath the indicator. And all of your documents now are going to be housed under this icon on the left side of your screen. So step 13, once the document button is selected underneath that indicator, you're going to click on add documents to start uploading. From there, you're going to select the appropriate document type from the drop down menu. Please do your best to select the document type that is closest to what you're trying to upload. That helps with organi organizing the information within the documents um, area for you and for us. So that is something you will need to do there. Then you're going to drag and drop your documents from your computer. And then once items are uploaded for an indicator, then you're going to then select close add document button. So let me go back quickly just to note. As previously um, trained in our previous trainings, you also had the ability to import documents as well. The same process um, applies where if you get to an indicator, you click on that documents button and you get to your documents area, you're instead of clicking add documents, you're going to import them where 
all of the documents that you've uploaded thus far are available. You would click on the document that pertains to that indicator, at which time you would then be able to um, upload um, using the import feature. I wanted to make a note of that. When you get to this last part of the upload section, making sure you have your queue progress completed. This, this should be all blue and then your document should be populated here. You can also click on this as a hyperlink and it'll pro provide a preview of that document so you can make sure that it's it was fully captured, it that it's not blank, or um, if you scanned it, that it's scanned all the way, you can preview it. Um, and so then from there, you would then close your documents area. And so now when you upload, instead of the, and this is a new piece as well, instead of your documents uploaded directly under the indicator, it will only be listed as a number under the indicator. And so again, this is an additional piece that I added to the training slides, which you will not see, but you will see once um, I provide the final slides to you. If the number above does not change over immediately, which is due to how the system is set up, um, please toggle between sections, returning to the original indicator where the number should change. So it just takes a little bit of time. So I would make sure that you make sure that the number changes before you move on, just to make sure that the document properly uploaded. The process is similar to how you will provide comments. So with step 14, if you need to provide a comment to justify a document that you provided, you're going to select the comments button that will allow you to provide explanation about any uploaded documentation as needed. Once the comments are provided, they will be housed under the comments on the left side of your screen. So again, your work is going to populate on the left side of the screen once you are in your survey. And again, we're going to walk through this once we get into the system. So with comments with your regional consultants, we appreciate them, you know, as far as reminders about information we're looking at via Excel tabs or previous CCIP history log notes regarding programmatic, programmatic changes. Or if you feel like, well, due to such and such, um, you know, this is why we had to provide this documentation. It may be something else that you're providing outside of what we are suggesting you provide that you wanted to provide clarification on. So again, this is a similar process. Once the comments button is selected, you're going to add new subject to begin the comment. Once you add a title, then you're going to provide any pertinent information related to the uploaded documents. Once complete, you're going to add new subject. So I've created a sample comment. The, the title is programming. That's the section of the survey and then minimum hours per week and it says please find our program's weekly hours of operation on page two of our program parent handbook so we know that the handbook typically provides it answers a number of indicators such as hours of operation your attendance your transportation policy this is an this is an example of using the import button so when you import that handbook document to a, a number of indicators you're going to add a comment that tells us where we're looking for that information. So again, that process hasn't changed much. I just wanted to show you that it looks a little different because now you're giving it a title and you are going into more detail after that. So after you provide the comment to review any replies from us, your regional consultant, you're going to pr press the green replies button. From there, your comments from the comments from you, the grantee, and from us, your regional consultant, can be viewed. And I know it's a repeat of the name, but that's just how it appears in the system. But the first comment is from you as the, the program manager or the grantee, and the response is from your regional consultant. Step 15. So after you provided your pertinent documentation, uploads, or and or any comments, a green check mark will appear next to the question number. That indicates that the question has been addressed. So once you get to step 16, 
After you have uploaded your pertinent documentation, please refer to the following two places. First, under questions, you are ensuring that all of your indicators and questions have been answered. So this is where your questions will be housed. First year implementation review is the name of the questions. And then you will make sure that all of your questions here are marked green and check marked. You also want to check under your sections area to ensure that the LEA column is completed with the goal again of them being all marked green and check marked for both your fiscal component and your programmatic uh, 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 questions. So to clarify, yes, the goal is for all to be green, um, but this does not mean that the sections are compliant. That comes from us. So again, I'll view the system so you can I'll let you all view the system to see how that looks. So once you've done the work, what it looks like when we come in and we mark each area compliant or non compliant. When you get to this point, this only means that you've addressed the questions that they've been answered, not whether they're compliant or not. If you have a yellow box from our point of view, once we've completed a review of your documentation, if you have a yellow box, which indicates a technical assistance has been offered or a red box, which indicates the indicator is not compliant, further action is needed per your regional consultant. And then again, we'll explore that once we go into the system. So I just wanted to again remind you, once you get to this space, this is saying that you've done your part. Once we go in and we do ours, there will be different indicators to indicate whether you're compliant, whether you've been offered a technical assistance, or if you have a non-compliant indicator which requires additional work. So again, this is new, so I wanted to take time to break down the survey questions um, based on the type of survey you'll be completing. So for those that have a first year implementation um, phase grant, um, you are going to review the fiscal component for first year where there is one section, one question. In this one question, all of the check boxes you need to check off, they are mandatory. Like Nina wants to see every piece of documentation for that question and I'll overview that once we go into the system. First year implementation review. This there is one section. Eight questions. The fiscal component for continuing grantees. There is one question. Four, I'm sorry, one section, four questions. And finally, those that are under the Kappa for your programmatic questions. So it looks a little different this year. So it's one section, six subsections, 34 questions. And so again, when we go into the system, you'll see what I'm talking about. So the first nine questions, they kind of, any section that you're in, those questions are going to kind of come out at you a little. Um, these are the questions for the program administration section. Then questions 10 through 15 are program management and so on. And so this is just another way that the system is organizing your work and the information that you're uploading. So for those that are under a CAPA review, this section, the CAPA monitoring review ODE section is for your view only. There is no information that needs to be uploaded or shared in that space. That is for your regional consultant to use only as we are doing your pre-site visit and on-site visit review. So as a reminder, um, it, it, as far as working through the system, if, if you need to move through each subsection, you can use the next icon here, which will take you through each section, um, such as program administration or programming. And for all surveys, please note which questions are required or recommended by the icon listed next to the indicator or question. And I believe most of them are required. I think there are some recommended based on how what the question is requiring. So just pay attention to that. For all surveys, if you wish to download a copy of your surveys, which you had access to previously, it just looks a little different please click on the three dots here next to the grant number to download the PDF. And so when you click those three dots, then there is a drop down 
and then it'll tell you to download PDF. So this can be used once you get into the system. You can download this for reference. Um, if you can't find the checklist that were previous, previously provided on the blog, or you can download this once you're done um, with your um, survey or once you rec receive feedback from your regional consultant. Uh, moving forward, we're, we're going to use the um, pre-site and on-site visit sections to not only check off what we're viewing from you or what we're seeing, we're also going to provide some notes or feedback that you can download as part of that. Um, um, once you pull down the survey, that information will be housed in there as well. All right. Are there any questions at this time? Um, I feel like this will be a good time. It's 2.22 um, to take a brief break and to make sure we check attendance as well. Again, we have a smaller group, so it won't take long to figure that out. Um, yeah, so are, are there any questions? You can either throw them in the chat or unmute yourself with um, questions about anything that you've seen, any changes that have been made. For clarification, I want to say that for those that have a Kappa on-site only, a virtual on-site only, you do not have a desk review. That took place last year. We were, you know, since we weren't able to do the on-sites, um, we were still able to complete the documentation for your desk review. And so all you're worried about this year, for those that did not have a on-site in their year two of their grant, you're going to then meet with us and you'll get that e that email that I mentioned earlier today from your regional consultant within the next few weeks. Any other questions? OK. Yes, Karen, Looks like you said my name is like Charmaine, OK. Uh, uh, how do we how know, know if we have, if we done, have done the survey already? already. For, for I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? I want to understand what you're asking. Well, the, the link you sent us to fill out the form mm -hmm. that was initially the wrong one, and then you sent another one. Mm -hmm. That form looks familiar to me. How can I check to make sure that is the one I've done? Because I've okay. done you're so with many. Uh, Holgate Local? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can check that right now briefly. Um, give us a few minutes. I'm. Um, let's see. And if I'm quiet, it's because I'm looking into that survey just to check. I have to click on all of these. Yep, I see it. It's there. Okay, thank you. You're good. You're welcome. Hi, Zinja. Thank you for your question. We had our Kappa due last year. I'm sorry, wait. We had our Kappa due last year in desk review. My question is, if we were not complying with an area, will it show up in the new system? That's a great question, Zinja. Um, no, it will not. Um, we were told in the development of the system that anything pre FY21 will stay housed in the compliance system. Um, but our office has made note of anything significant moving into this new system, meaning if there was anything that came up last year or the year before um, that we're aware of, we've made note of that. But moving forward, any work that is in the system will stay connected. It'll be easier for us to keep track of things year to year while you are an active grantee. Does that help? OK, thank you. I would um, normally I would you're welcome. Um, I, I want to take a few minutes um, because this is going to um, take a little bit of time to walk through. Um, and again, after we finish the walkthrough of the system, we just have a few more slides to complete after that, um, which should take us to um, about 345. So 
Um, I'm actually going to run and grab some water um, <laughs> because it's, you know, the, the going through the training and such. So we can, um, I'll about 2.30 because I'm just running downstairs to grab something to drink. So I'm going to pause the training. Um, and when I return, we're going to go ahead and walk through the system. So if anyone needs to step away for a second. I, Anita, I have a question. If I stop recording, will that stop it completely? Uh, yes, it'll. Um... You'll have a first session, and then when you come back and start again, you'll get a second video. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That's okay. So I'm going to just um, um, step away for a few minutes just to grab some water, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to knock this out. Um, Stephanie, can you check if YMCA has filled out the survey? Also looks for me. Okay. Um, really quick, I'm going to um, view the results. Let me double check really quick. looking Stephanie I had to go back through it again because I think I am in Cincinnati public no nope, that's not it um Cincinnati it wouldn't it, I'm going through it in the system but once we download the data it'll be easier but I I'm not seeing it yeah I'm not seeing it Okay, thanks, Lydia. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, like I said, just run downstairs to grab a drink of water, um, and just um, step away for a few minutes. So in the meantime, if there are any additional questions, please drop them in the chat. I'm not gonna end the um, um, stop the recording because there's no pause <laughs> with this system. So um, again, if you guys could give me just a few minutes, I'm just stepping away just to grab something to drink. I'll be right back.
soothing music. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys didn't fall asleep. I apologize. I wanted to find something that was appropriate, but, you know, allow for some um, break time. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate that. All right. So we are going to now um, walk through the system. So what I am going to do is unshare my screen with the current presentation. And so I'm going to do my best to show you what it looks like once you log in. So I'm going to share my screen again to, so that you can see where we are. Okay, so you log into your OHID account and you are going to your OHID app store where you would then find your My Sites and Applications. <clears throat> From there, again, as I stated in the training slides previously, you will not see this monitoring application until I am notified from our development team that it is ready to go. But in the meantime, this is where you will find it. Again, you should still have access to the compliance system. So this is again where you can reference documentation from fy20 and um, earlier but for the monitoring system you will find that here so for the purposes of this training i am going to log into a development site um, for our 21st century surveys and so i'm just going to take you there off uh onto the side and another so again ignore let me yeah so please ignore this this is not what you would be seeing um what I need to do to log into the site. What? Okay. Again, ignoring all of this, this is what you need to see. So when you hit that monitoring application, this is what you will encounter. So for the number of surveys that you have access to, FY 2021, you will see what has not been started, or what's in progress, and ultimately you will see what surveys have been completed. So you're selecting your program. This is just the one district listed, but if you have more than one, it will indicate that and you would use the drop down menu to select the appropriate survey. And then you are going to click 21st Century Community Learning Centers. Once you get to the basic search tab, again, if it doesn't auto populate, you need to type that in. And once you do that, once you have something listed here, you're going to click search. You're going to go under the search results and click on the organization or district you are trying to access. And again, it lists out the program period, the number of surveys that you'll have access to, the overall completion status of all of the surveys, that are populated in the system and then overall compliance status. OK, so you're at the overview tab. Again, you have your status listed here. Your consultant's name will be listed here. The number of surveys that you have, um, that'll be listed here as well. Any issues or it says issues, but this is this is where your non-compliant areas will come up as well as any technical assistance that's offered. And then again, your utility count. So the number of documents you have uploaded will populate here. Any recent documents under 30 days will be listed here. 
Same thing for your comments and any communication that you receive. Um, I apologize. Someone else is logging in. And I am noting who was just let into the room via our um, attendance. Okay. I think I'm the only one left in here. Okay, we're good. All right. All right. So I wanted you all to be to be aware of the overview tab. And as well, here is that left side of the screen where all of your um, pertinent icons are housed. So let's explore that. This is where all of your documents are going to be housed. So as you add them and you select the document type, you drag and drop them and then it populates. This is what that's going to look like. And so when you click on that, you can either download the document or before you download, you can preview it. So this is what that document looks like. And actually for your reference, this is what the survey will look like once you have access to your uh, system um, application. So this is what your surveys will now look like once you hit that download PDF button I mentioned earlier. So you close that. Again, you can always import your documents based on the list of documents that populate here. Here are where your comments will be housed. Again, clicking on replies to see your initial comment, then the response It's always going to go in order from the bottom up. With the date and time listed. And again, you can test it like any response that'll be. There. So. Your communications and so I believe this is from the department, so anytime we need to make note of something related to this process. Um, whether we do a call with you, video call, send an email, we'll make sure to keep all that information housed here. And then another note um, that is also going to be noted on the final slides is your contacts. And so we stress the importance of you updating your OEDS roles because that information gets pulled and put here. You need to, you're going to look under the safe OEDS tab for all of your roles associated with your district. Or an organ and or organization. And again, this is like a, a dummy uh, account or a dummy survey. So what you're seeing here is just all of this is example work. Nothing is um, for Columbus City, for example. This is not what that looks like. This is just for us to to test the system and make any adjustments. But I just wanted you to see what that looked like. OK. So let's go over to the questions tab. So we're in the overview tab right now. This bar here is going to be present. Even if you as you're moving over into the. Surveys, if I'm not mistaken, yes. So let's take a look at we're in. Uh, grant number 14588, which is Afrocentric. Um, and again, this is this is not actual. This some of this may be changed just based on the needs of the system, but this is not actual information. Um, it is, but it's not. And so um, you're going to find and, and double check to make sure once you add your survey. Then you're going to. Wait until information populates because sometimes it does take a little time. Give it a few minutes and I don't think there's anything else for this one, but you will see a grant added uh, that will populate and you can um, hit control and select if there's more than one. And once you select the grants that you need to add, you're going to click add new grants. Where they will populate here, then you will go to um, completion status and underneath this column and click start survey. And then it'll show up as being in prog or um, started in um, under the completion status uh, column. So we're in the survey now. And so I wanted you to have a, a view of what it looked like once you've completed your work, but also what the consultant will do on their end. And so we're under the, the fiscal component for first year grant. Um, section and so again, this question is all documentation is required per NINA. 
And so you're going to check off each box here. And for each box you check, you need to click on the documents icon. Where once it opens up, you would either add your documents or if they were previously uploaded, you would up import them. Once you've completed that, you click out of that. And so you'll notice when you start your work, you'll notice after you add the document that sometimes that number doesn't automatically change. So I would encourage you to toggle between sections. Going back to the original question to ensure that that number does change. Same thing with comments. If you have to add a comment for anything here, you will click on your comments icon and view your comments or add them. If there is any communication added from your regional consultant, you will click on communication and view the communication. This add new button is only for the consultant only. It's, I believe this is on the ODE side of the system. So again, um, it's, that's just for our reference, but you'll still be able to see any communication that comes through. Okay, so this is the fiscal desk review for first year implementation. So what you notice here is once you fulfill the indicator, you'll see this green check mark. Once we as your consultant go in, we will then mark if this is compliant. If your technical assistance has been offered, which will it will show up as yellow. Or if you have a non-compliant indicator, it will show up as red. So as a result, this will be green for the work that you've completed, but this would either be green, yellow or red coming from your regional consultant. So again, you're checking here to make sure that you've completed the work here and here, which will also reflect green here under the LEA column. Once your consultant goes in and it'll be notified, it'll be um, noticeable under the ODE column of your sections. We will mark the question compliant here, which will reflect underneath this indicator box here as green, yellow or red. And as a result, this ODE column will be green, yellow or red. So if there's anything other than green listed in that ODE column, it will also reflect in the CPL or compliance column here as green, yellow or red. From there, you will have additional work to do. Um, so let's move on to the next section, which you can use here with this button. So now, as we previously stated, there's eight questions under the first year implementation review. So again, you are going through the questions, you're checking your box, you're going and clicking on the documents button or and or the comments button to add documents or clarifying comments. Once this hits green, and actually I wanted to show you what that looked like since this doesn't save, there's no save button, um, and I'll do that in a second, um, then you'll be able to um, go through to the next question and the next question after that. Um, what you'll note here for the anyone under first year implementation review, I, before the system goes live, have to go in and make adjustments to some of the questions, the language, because this information was given to development several months ago before the fall restart plan was released. And so as a result of that, some questions need to be tweaked, and this is one of them. So instead of saying no later than October 19th, it's going to say no later than November 2nd. That's just an example of some things that need to happen in addition to other work that we're doing before the system goes live. And again, due to COVID, a lot of things have shifted and changed since you know we left the end of last year, um, FY20. So again, we just ask for your patience as we work to finalize the system. So um, yes, you will complete your questions. Um, for those that are under first year, you are uploading that completed consultation form that you submitted with your application and noting if this is part of your documentation, if the documentation notes that there was a decline of services, you will note that or just note if there was any no eligible non-publics, um, you would note that here as well. 
So quickly, before I get too far, I'm going to log out really quickly here and go to another survey, an, another um, role that will allow me to show you what certain components look like from your point of view. Uh, I'm going to go back to that shortly. Again, those two screens, you will not pay attention. That's not something you need to um, worry about. That's just for my view currently, but this is where you need to focus on getting to this view right here. So this is an example of having multiple organizations that you need access to. So it, it, this blue box will pop up saying that you are associated with multiple organizations and you are to select one. And we're for this case, we're going to select Marion City and click 21st Century Community Learning Centers. From here, it's already pre-populated, so then you will just click search. Click on Marion City, where the organization is. Again, your overview tab is where you are, that's what you first encounter. Then you're going to go to your questions tab. Surveys have already been added, but I believe I can add another one. I'm going to keep that there for a second. So while this, I'm going to come back to that shortly. So you, I was going to try to show you how to upload that, but it depends on if there's a survey to add. But I wanted to show you what it looked like when you were when you were um, trying to fulfill the indicator. So again, you are checking all boxes here. And for each box you check, your answer is automatically saved. I would encourage you to go, even though you can check all five of these, you should do them one at a time as you are uploading documentation. So the first check box, you will click on documents, add document or import document, making sure that that number changes over to the number of documents that you uploaded for that uh, checkbox or that I'm sorry for the indicator. And if it doesn't populate right away, you can always toggle between sections going back to that question to ensure that the number has changed to what it needs to be. OK, um, so that was what I wanted to show you there. I'm going to go back to the other survey and I apologize for toggling back and forth, but I want to you all to get the 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 most out of this experience so that you understand, especially as you are reviewing this um, video in the future, that you understand every part of the system that you need to um, in order to be successful in using it. Hmm, that's interesting. Never seen that before. Okay, let's go back here. OK, I don't know what that was that just popped up. OK, see, and again, I started to like try to figure out if there was something wrong, but again, it takes a little time because this is a cloud based environment. So that was just an example. <laughs> of that. So again, let's go back to the questions. Once we okay, once we go through basic search, Columbus City questions. Okay. Okay. So we finished the first section. So for those that are in a first year implementation phase, you will move on from fiscal component to the first year implementation review. So these are only two sections you will see. Um, I wasn't able to pull up an actual survey, but that's basically this was one of the things we had to correct. Um, you should not see the Kappa survey questions. And if you have a Kappa, you will not see the first year questions. So you will only see the first two questions sections if you are under first year implementation review. And so this is what that looks like. Again, this is what you'll be seeing on your end as completed. Once your regional consultant goes in, they're going to mark the box either compliant 
offer a technical assistance, which will be yellow, or if there's a non-compliant area, it will be marked red. And so this is what that looks like. Again, for each box you check, one to two, you will then click on documents and proceed with the upload process. Or if you need to make a comment, you will proceed with that for each indicator underneath that section or subsection. Again, um, the question here about programming is going to be updated to reflect um, FY21. So it'll be um, November 2nd, and that was made per the fall restart program plan. The question I wanted to mention also under first year implementation, which is new, is that the sub grantee is following building and or district current safety protocols and technology accommodations for the 2020-2021 school year. So what I'll note here is that for everyone, whether you're first year or CAPA, you will see this question. For those that are under a CAPA review, what you will see is that same question. Nothing's changed with the process. For your desk review for CAPA, everything reflects the previous school year. But for this question only, you will need to provide us documentation for this year. That's to ensure that as we navigate through this COVID-19 pandemic, that you're considering the needs of the students and your families that you're serving with regards to safety protocols and technology accommodations. And so these are things that you need to provide us. All right, moving on again, you can use this next section. So again, the goal is for these, this top area, the numbers one through eight need to be green. And once we review your documentation, these check boxes underneath are green. And then your LEA column, your ODE column, and your compliance columns will be green. So if you're a first year implementation and you get here, you're done. You're done with your part and you are compliant and you are done with your first year implementation review. Yay. Um, and so it'll also be marked here as well moving forward and also just a note again for the questions that are required those are marked with an asterisk if there's something marked re recommended you'll see that marked there as well and i don't think we have any i just made it i want to make a note of that next section so now if you're logging in as a grantee under a kappa you, your first section is going to be this fiscal component for continuing grant so that's what you'll see first um, there are four questions here. Again, the same process. You check your box, you upload your document. If needed, you toggle through sections to ensure that the number reflects what you just uploaded. It takes a little time um, due to the system. Um, then you will have your comments as needed. And if we add any communication for that indicator, you will, we will put that there for you. Question two. Um, you'll note in the um, the checklist that I uh, added from the blog that this question was adjusted to reflect a change in the fund that was previously used um, for those treasurers on the line or for those that are taking this information back to their treasurers. The fund is now 21st CCLC um, 509. And this is all fiscal jargon. Um, if you have questions about that, please reach out to Nina. All of this documentation is required for her if you are under this fiscal component for continuing grant section. She asked me to clarify here as well that this is your inventory policy, not list. This is not the same thing as what you show us during your virtual on-site. This is the inventory policy. She asked me to stress that per the last training. And then again, you are providing um, accounting records. You need to provide at least one of these here. And these two down here are only required if she asks for them. If Nina requests this, these last two check boxes, then you will have to work with her to get that into the system. Again, you're making sure that all four of these boxes are green. The, the indicators underneath indicate compliant technical assistance or non-compliant, at which time you will have to address them. But again, all of these need to be green. Let me go to another survey so you can see otherwise. Okay. 
to so so for example if you completed the work you're showing that you've completed it but then we go in and notice there's something wrong after we work with you to try to resolve the issue we still don't have what we need or you can't provide it to us that can be a non-compliant at which time you will have and that actually should be um red and so ultimately your compliance column will be red at which time you will be directed to the issues ap tab to address that as a corrective action plan under this first year implementation review there were several indicators for example that had technical assistance which means that additional work is needed but this won't stop us from completing your review this is just additional feedback or areas of improvement that were noted to ensure that you are successful moving forward through your grant cycle so if after your work is completed this is green this is yellow and then therefore this is yellow then you would be directed to the technical assistance tab where you will provide you will be provided more information um, based on the indicator uh, that you received the technical assistance for. Okay, so I'm gonna go, to go back to the other survey that I was in. So I just wanted you to see the difference in the icons. They, they're the same concept we've been talking about over the years, but it just looks a little different in how it populates in the system. So now we're going to go to the Kappa Monitoring Review Survey. So again, this, this, the, there's still a nice number of questions, but they're categorized or housed differently. So now we're under the program administration survey. So instead of the, the sections being what they were previously, you'll find that once you click on this section, the subsection comes up where your program administration questions come up one through nine. If you click on next, it'll take you to program management, which is questions 10 through 15. Next, staffing and professional development, 16 through 21. Okay. Programming is questions 22 through 26. Sustainability, questions 27 through 30. And finally, evaluation and program outcomes, 31 through 34. Now, let's go back to the first section, program administration. So as you work through this, again, you're doing the same process. You're checking the box. You're going to your documents icon uploading your documents and then coming back here to make sure that that number changes. Now, what I will say, since you're in this, there's multiple subsections. When I mentioned toggling between, when you get to the capital monitor and review LEA section, you can just toggle in between these. And you'll notice that in a moment's time, the numbers will change as you upload a document or provide a comment. And so I'll just note any significant changes in this survey. Um, but you have the uh, questions that will ultimately be um, added here. So what you'll notice in the survey questions and the checklist that was provided on the blog, that since this has been created or is being finalized, there have been a number of question adjustments needed because we started this several months ago. And since then, we've had the fall restart plan and a number of things that have been added to accommodate. And so um, those changes that you see in the attachments that were provided on the blog will be added to the, the, the final system before it's opened up for everyone. That's a part of my work as well as ensuring that the system is working properly. And so Anita and Leona, who are a part of our um, IT development team, they were on earlier and that's who I've been working with even up to this training today to ensure that any adjustments needed will be reflected in the final survey once it's released. Um, so again, you're noting you're going through and you're providing um, documentation as needed. I also tried to be provide more descriptors so that you understand what we're looking for for certain um, indicators. So you'll notice that for a lesson plan, we need one for reading, one for math. I'm trying to note any other changes. So a big change, and this came from feedback from multiple people um, last year, 
is we consolidated the non-public consultation questions. So it used to be questions nine and 10, but now it's just housed under one question. And as we've been reiterating about the importance of consultation, in your consultations, you should be addressing um, all of these boxes listed underneath here. Um, the method, how the district will, how the serve, all of these, I would say, and I'll try to highlight them so you can see. So all of these check boxes that I'm highlighting should be addressed in your communication, whether it's in a meeting with um, agenda and meeting minutes that we can clearly read and understand either via letter that is sent through the mail or via email. We need to know that you have properly consulted with them. And so you can either provide one of those three, um, either a, an agenda, um, um, a meeting agenda with minutes, sign in sheets, emails, letters that include the contact name and school name that was a part of the consultation. Previously, we would get a, a template letter that was sent out, but we, we would sometimes didn't know who received it. And so we need that information as well. And that should, it, although this is from last year, we should, we should be seeing that. So if it's not noted in that um, documentation, we will follow back up with you um, on that. So I wanted to note that as a change. So I'm going to move forward to the program management section, subsection. So that's questions 10 through 15. Again, I'm not going to go through each question. Just any noted changes from last year. And again, for questions such as those with regards to transportation policy, attendance policy, a program handbook, again, typically addresses a number of those indicators. So once you upload it to a question the first time, you can then import it to a different question and just make a comment underneath that indicator telling us where to look. That's the easiest way to do it. And I encourage you because, again, as you start get started, you'll find that streamlining the process with importing certain documents versus always up re uploading them will be helpful. Because each time you do it, you have to save it on your computer, label it. It, it will be best to just do it once and just uh, import it to the other indicators that you need to address and then just make a comment on where we should look. Um, yes, and so here's that question that I mentioned that the first year implementation phase also has. Everything for those that are in Kappa, every indicator underneath the desk review portion is from 2019-2020 school year, the documentation you need to provide. Question 15 under your program management section is the only question in the desk review portion that addresses 2020-2021 school year via your district's current safety protocols and technology accommodations. We need to see information for that. Okay, just looking to make sure there's no questions. Feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, staffing and professional development is section, I'm sorry, question 16 through 21. And here again, no major changes. We tried to um, expand on some things. So question 19, you are providing evidence of um, evidence-based professional development for your staff. And I also added here for clarification what that looks like. So, for example, you know, your staff has training on uh, classroom and behavioral management or special education supports or how you are addressing mental health in your students. Anything creative to show that you are educating your staff and empowering them to work with the targeted population of students that are being served per your approved FY21 new application or continuation plan. Um, I'm sorry at your FY20 continuation plan, because this is for the year prior, my apologies. So that is your previous year's um, continuation plan, your documentation to reflect that. Another note for this section, you no longer have to provide documentation for your mandatory trainings. We're doing that now by you registering in advance. 
Um, the survey monkey account allows us to download that data into a spreadsheet. And so moving forward, especially in this virtual space, we're just working to acknowledge that folks are present and we are tracking that system. And Tabitha, who's our data coordinator, is managing that so that we know who's attending, who we may need to follow up with to provide additional support um, or who hasn't shown up and therefore we have to have a different conversation. Moving on to programming, that is set questions 22 through 26. So what I noticed here when I was in the last training was that there was a delay in the question switching over, as you can see. So there's this is the section on staffing and professional. No, that's not it. OK, there it is. Staffing and professional development. And so I would again, I'm doing this to show you that there are some delays when you're moving from section to section. So there it is. So programming. Again, um, I added here um, for the evidence of student choices and voices and programming implementation, um, the advisory group evidence must include student involvement. We must see that. And if you're providing a completed student survey, please remove any identifying student information. Question 23, we also um, provided some context with regards to differentiated instructional needs. This should include those students, any students that you're serving with special needs and or learning disabilities. I need to update language on that one. It should say and or because you may not serve both. You may serve one or the other. Um, so I'm going to add that on my notes. I've been doing that through these trainings as well, and um, I appreciate your patience on that. I'm just making sure that what the system should reflect is actually um, considered. So that is and or. OK, so again, we are looking for um, a, a publisher a curriculum description, i.e. adaptive um, based on student performance or need and or lesson plans that address differentiated instructions such as um, those that include small group instruction. Same thing for question 24. We just need to see that your positive youth development is considering those with special needs and or uh, learning disabilities. Hmm. And I think I missed that question. Um, and I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm, I noticed that a question and academic activities indicator. I think that question was omitted from the um, the checklist that was provided. I just noticed that because it skips. It goes from evidence of student choices and voices to uh, positive youth development. So I have to add that um, question. So um, if you if that's omitted, um, please forgive me on that. Um, again, I'm going to work to get out the final um, uh, slides as soon as possible, but you'll have this recording as well that will note that. OK. So that will be question 24, similar to question 23. Um, the program enables student um, students to explore community resources and issues that that's still the same from last year. And uh, question 26 is the same. Question 27 through 30 is sustainability. Um, again, we are noting uh, from FY20, you should be um, giving us evidence to show that you have met um, at least three times last year with your primary partner. We need that evidence. Meeting agenda and minutes should be detailed where you're, we know who's in the room and who's having the conversation. We've gotten minutes from folks that just scribble down stuff and just said, hey, we, we don't have anything else. We're just going to send this. Please take time to provide us something we can understand, whether if it's handwritten or if there are many minutes that they're typed so that we can, again, understand what's going on. Again, we, we understand that, you know, everyone has a number of things going on. 
impacts in a number of different places, but we to, to ensure that we're that everyone's doing their part here. We just ensure that ahead of time as you're preparing to upload, if you have uh, meeting minutes that need to be clarified, please take care of that before you upload them into the system. That makes everyone's job a lot easier, especially for us as we're reviewing it. Um, um, let's see, question 28, there's no changes there. Question 29. Question 30, so this question has not changed other than we just added some um, descriptors to make sure that it's clear what we're looking for. So you need to provide a, a, a up-to-date sustainability plan with efforts reflected through the end of last year. There may have been updates. If, if it's updated through this year, that's fine. But at the very least, we need to see that it's been um, um, updated through the end of last school year. Um, sustainability progress reports through the end of last year and or strategic planning agenda and minutes, which should be typed or written neatly. Next, we are then going to our last subsection, which is evaluation and program outcomes. Nothing in this section has changed. We did add a descriptor under mass communication to indicate the examples of mass communication that you can provide. That's the only change. <laughs> Other than that, none of the questions have changed or nothing's been added. For your view only, you will be able to see the pre-site visit documentation review questions, which is questions one through four under this section here, and the on-site visit questions. Now, what you will see is check boxes that we will be referencing as your regional consultant but underneath here, which is working, which they're working on adding, there will be a notes feedback text box that we will be providing any notes or feedback uh, to you based on the pre-site visit documentation review. Now, during this part of your review, we will come in early, you know, at least a half hour, hour early from the on-site. Again, this is all virtual. Once we get to the pre-site visit documentation review, um, in the email that we send you with the, the on-site visit information, um, you're either going to work with us via Teams, which we're doing now, or if you have a different um, virtual platform you would like us to use, i.e. Zoom or Google Meet, you would send that to us in advance and that's how we would meet. From there, you need to be able to share your screen with the documents listed in questions one through four of the CAPA Monitoring Review ODE section. So we'll look at your current inventory list. And again, everything under this section is for the current school year, 2020-2021. Your current inventory list, attendance. And again, the way this is look, this the way this looks is going to be changing because this is not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to have check boxes as well as a notes feedback text box um, where we can provide notes based on what you're showing us. And so you need to provide a mechanism for tracking attendance, and we give examples there, a reason for attendance, and then evidence of student tracking and verification done on a daily basis. That you are uh, maintaining appropriate personnel documentation. And so you will see, we will need to see a current staff roster for this year, time and effort records for each staff person, as well as current unexpired background checks. I mentioned this in the last couple of trainings, but for those that you know, we worked with that may say, you know, due to this being sensitive information, you need to come to our HR department and look at this. Um, you will need to communicate to whoever has this information that is part of your compliance review with the state of the Department of Education. You need access to the background checks for each current staff person that is listed on that roster. If you find that that's a challenge working with your HR department, please um, contact me um, or connect your contact on the local level to me and I will have a conversation or just send them anything that they need to allow that to happen because we need you to share this information on your screen and we need to check off each person that um, is listed on that uh, current staff roster to ensure that everyone's properly um, has a background check and um, time and effort records. So I want to clarify that. 
And then question four is your roster matrix. Again, many of you are working with you know, your external evaluators to collect data and you use the shared documents such as a spreadsheet. In that roster matrix that you need to show us, we all we need to see is your list of enrolled students for this year, a column that lists them coming from any feeder schools, individual income eligibility such as free and reduced lunch. Uh, we need to see your attendance records for at least two months from this year, at least two months of attendance and academic eligibility. So we'll be checking these off and after we review the indicator, we'll provide any feedback in a, a box that'll be at the bottom of the indicators. And so finally, we will go into the on-site review. And so because of the pivot we've had to make with COVID, this question will be updated to reflect the under the FY21 continuation plan. This is what your hours would be, but we're since we're under the fall restart program plan that has changed and it will be noted. To say and again, you can refer to this. It'll have was listed here and underneath there. It'll say or per the FY21 fall restart program plan, a sub grantee provides and based on whether you're site or school based or if you're remote or blended learning, that will determine the hours. So that was that would be what you need to um, show us um, via your program schedule. Which we will ask for in advance. Um, we need to see that you are providing a daily nutritious snack. And again, this is another change you will see in the final survey once you have access. If you're site based, we need to actually observe snack time, observe, observe, you know, take us where your snack prep area is. Um, if you're remote only, you need to provide a written uh, overview of your process of distributing snack to participating students, i.e. student family snack pickup. However, that process is going in your remote learning space. That's what you need to communicate to us and, and share with us on screen and be able to explain that. And again, that'll be in the final um, survey. Um, that the site is providing research based reading and math activities. And this these questions are the same. Um, we're just asking for a lesson plan that we can use to observe in our observation. For positive youth development activity, same thing. Question nine, we are looking at. Teacher student interaction and here's an example of what we're looking for here, how teacher uses classroom management techniques how they redirect positively reinforced students, how students are, are engaged um, during programming. That's also something we look for. We understand this year is a little different with us being in a virtual space, but for those especially who are site based, um, we should still see you know, what we are accustomed to seeing. Um, students should not be off in the corner on their phone, uh, unless there's just a, a, a part of the agenda that or the schedule that allows that, but you shouldn't, the students should be engaged and involved in what's going on with programming. Otherwise, we will make a note of that and provide um, some assistance um, or some suggestions on how to improve. Question 10 is the daily schedule offering activities that meet the needs of participating um, students. And again, I clarified that to state that this also includes students with special needs and, and or learning disabilities. And we will observe session activities and compare them to the program calendar. So if we are aware if you, you know, if it's noted that there are students with um, various needs, we would like to see how th they are being accommodated. Um, or if there is a student that, um, comes in later because they have a, a separate tutoring session like you know we wanted to know what that looks like and how they're integrated back in or integrated into programming so that's what we'll be looking for and with the the snack and the overall experience of programming we always and this hasn't changed we're going to try to identify or work with you to identify a student that we can talk to just ask them what their experience is like and that is it for your desk and virtual on site review um, sections. Now again, um, if you are offered a technical assistance, this is where you will find that information. There's nothing here currently, but this is where you will go. And if you are issued a non compliance, this is the tab that you will go.
I wrote some notes down here as so I wanted to make sure I review that. Um, so to clarify again, what you see now um, in the system as far as the questions, there have been some adjustments made. Please review the checklist from uh, in the monitoring system surveys that were posted on the blog last week that I posted in the chat earlier to assist you with organizing your documentation ahead of the system opening um, later on um, next week um, or so. And so again, we're still waiting for confirmation as there are a number of things that still need to be um, finalized, but I will, we will definitely keep you posted on when that happens. Are there any questions regarding what you saw via the system before we move forward? None. OK. All right, we are almost done, you guys, and I know it's Friday. You're like, oh my goodness, we're almost there. OK, so. The phrase that I use to describe how you should navigate the system and providing what's necessary. For your regional consultant to review what's what's the phrase anyone know? Or can remember. You can. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Yes, less is more. This is something that's been in my trainings for several years now, and I'm going to continue to say it. <laughs> this is really important. We are happy to see that our programs are so successful, but the process with the monitoring system and uploading documents is not really a time to show out. Um, we just we we understand that this is an important time and everyone's excited, but we for each uh, piece of documentation you upload, we have to review that. So if you could just give us what we need, nothing more, that would be greatly appreciated. One to two pieces of documentation, unless it's otherwise noted, should be uploaded. The goal is to streamline the process as much as possible for an efficient desk review for you, the grantee, and for us, your regional consultant. As reminders, please carefully re review the documentation um, that you are uploading to ensure that it answers the indicator. And we ask that you please do not upload hundreds of pages that do not support the indicator. Your handbooks typically have a number of pages, but nothing where we have to search through it. Um, we would just appreciate that you give us exactly what we need. Okay. So with compliance documents tips, we ask you again to read the indicator carefully, making sure that the documentation is grant specific. And before uploading your documents, please label them to reflect what indicator it is addressing. So for grant specific documents, for example, if you have multiple grants, they should be uploading. You should be uploading specific documents to each grant unless they are exact in what each grant provides. This includes, for example, lesson plans, program schedules, etc. It should reflect the uniqueness of that grant and what was approved in your new application or continuation plan, as well as submitted in your recently issued FY21 fall restart program plan. If you are a first year grantee. Because remember, for those in CAPA, uh, your CAPA review, you're, well, you're providing documentation from the FY19, I'm sorry, for the 2019-2020 school year. To assist you with, um, to assist you and your consultant with this process, please properly label your document to reflect what indicator it's addressing. If you have multiple grants, please start with the grant number first. That's why I, I, I italicize that because if you're just working with one grant, then that's not really necessary. But if you have multiple, it'll be helpful if you can provide the grant number as well. We understand again the deadline being December 18th. I might put a little pressure, but just know that you have the questions now. You can go ahead and start to organize. And once the system goes live, you can just start popping them into your survey um, because this helps us to um, have more time to complete our reviews ahead of any um, um, on sites that are scheduled moving forward. If you are missing anything or something's not completed by the December 18th deadline and we don't hear back from you, then we will reach out. 
but again, we are in a, a space of being really flexible. So if you again need more time outside of the December 18th date, please contact Char if you're first year or if you are under your capital review, please work with your regional consultant to inform them of any additional time needed. So some compliance um, documentation updates. All second and fourth year capital review documentation should reflect the 2019-2020 school year or fiscal year 2020, with the exception of that district safety plan question that I mentioned. If you are a grantee that did not have a on-site visit for FY20 due to COVID, your desk review has been completed. You are, if you haven't heard anything else from your regional consultant about that, other than you're compliant, then you're fine. Um, you're focused on just doing your virtual on-site. And again, any um, documentation that is required for the pre-site visit um, documentation review should reflect the current year. Grantees are no longer required to provide documentation for any of our department's trainings. If you still need access to the previous compliance system, as, you sh as I showed you walking into the system, you still have that, you should still have that icon as part of your um, application in OHID. No personal student data should be should not be uploaded as part of your monitoring survey documentation. Program licensing is only required for first year implementation phase only. And your program must submit a sustainability plan and progress reports, which should reflect the end of 2019 2020. It should not be an outline or a template. It needs to reflect the efforts made to sustain the program through and beyond your grant cycle. Technically speaking, Ensure that scanned documents are uploaded appropriately or, and are not blank. Please ensure that documents are in a recognized format such as JPEG, Word doc, PDF, Excel, or zip. There's many more, but those are the ones that are more common. And grantees, you still cannot delete once you add a document. If you need something deleted, please email your regional consultant. So this is what I mentioned earlier as far as the contacts area. So to ensure proper roles have been assigned for application system access, please click on the contacts icon, then on the safe OEDS tab. Again, please work with your OEDSR administrator to ensure that your roles in OEDS are current because they will be pulled from OEDS and housed under this contacts area. As a reminder, there are no saved or refresh buttons due to the new cloud-based environment. And that is it for that section. OK, Caroline, thank you uh, again. Um, once I can convert this recording to our uh, department's YouTube page, which I'm doing, I'm going to send this to them as soon as we're done. Um, then I'm going to uh, wait for them to uh, turn it around. And once I can do that, um, I will add that recording to an email along with these final slides and send that over, uh, send that to everyone that participated in the trainings as well as put it on the blog. Before we close out this training, I wanted to discuss in using the system um, different compliance statuses that you may encounter. Um, best case scenario, which I claim that you all experience, all documentation is appropriate and you are compliant. But on the flip side, there could be some issues for which your consultant will provide additional feedback or support via the following areas. Technical assistance, not a uh, non-compliance, which can relate, re, I'm sorry, result in a corrective action plan. With the technical assistance, as I stated earlier, it does not mean that you have risen to a level of a finding. This is just additional feedback that we wanted to provide. Correction is expected to be implemented and maintained throughout the remainder of your grant cycle and failure to implement a technical assistance correction could result in a finding or a corrective action plan. So anything that goes into this new monitoring system, we will be able to tie back to you as a grantee in years to come. So if you receive a technical assistance in FY21 and we expect you to um, implement that moving forward and we get to that happening in year two, we get to your year, year four CAPA and we still notice that there's 
not been a change from that previous technical assistance, then we that will be justification for us to say, OK, well, this has been an issue before and it's not being addressed. So then we can look at possibly, depending on how severe the situation, um, resulting in um, a non-compliant finding, and that will lead to a corrective action plan. We should definitely see any corrections from year to year after you receive a technical assistance. So you would access that via the technical assistance tab on the grantee home screen. From there, you will be viewing details issued by your regional consultant that will require you to take action to um, improving either an element of your program or to correct documentation that was submitted. Your consultant creates the technical assistance. From there in the offer to box, the, the grantee staff member for whom the TA was offered will be there. And then it is expected again that the concern is addressed and corrected going forward. With any non-compliance issues, this is a more severe issue that must be corrected through a corrective action plan. And there must be a correction made through a significant program change, process, or reimbursement. I always use the example for reimbursement, for example, that um, food is a is the big um, uh, area under this review for the fiscal component that would be a non-compliant. NINA is looking over documentation, whether it's first year or CAPA, where she's going to note that if she follows up with you and asks you for a receipt for something that was that appears to be inappropriate, she will ask for further clarification. And if you cannot provide that or the justification is um, not reasonable or necessary, then she may proceed with doing a corrective action plan. That's just an example. Um, corrective action, I'm sorry. She would then proceed with giving you a non-compliant, which you will have to address via a corrective action plan. And that is submitted through the system itself. What happens here? is the consultant will mark a pertinent question or indicator non-compliant. You as the grantee will review the non-compliant indicators under the issues AP tab on the home screen. And then you will click on the details button for each non-working, I'm sorry, for each non-compliant indicator to see the working tabs. So the system will look very similar. This is pulled from compliance, but we, um, again, I think the only difference is that the, the lettering will be red instead of blue. All corrective action is done from this space and ties to unique areas of non-compliance. So under the issues conditions tab, the non-compliant indicator is written as written via your first year implementation or CAPA survey. Um, you, we will pull that from that survey and put it here with us, the consultant, explaining why the indicator was out of compliance. The consultant then explains why the indicator is not compliant under this tab and what must be done to show compliance. And then under the evidence tab, you would upload the documentation that supports your corrective action plan using those similar icons that we referred to throughout the earlier slides. And then finally, as you um, if you are in this space and you receive a corrective action, um, your authorized representative will receive system email notices when the issue or condition is created. And they also will receive an email notice when the corrective action plan is approved and the non-compliance is resolved. So that is your new tracking and monitoring system. As always, Please follow the blog if you're not already doing so. This is where any program updates via blog posts are held and the program resources tab will be updated again with any information that you are referring to or receiving via this training. And as a reminder, these final slides along with this recording, which I'm going to work with communications on right after we're done, I'm going to add to the blog by early next week once I can get that recording converted to YouTube. And it will also be added under the program resources tab on the blog. And as always, once again, I am happy to stay connected. Let's stay connected. Um, if there are any questions about the system itself or any requirements with regards to Kappa, um, you can always contact me. 
If you feel more comfortable, you can always reach out to your regional consultant and they can then follow up with me, whatever works for you. But just know that we are here to support you through this process. Are there any last minute questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat or just unmute yourself. We, again, we're a small group today, so. Nothing, no questions. <laughs> all righty, that is awesome. It, it sounds like to me you all are very um, or at least familiar. Thank you, Libby. Um, I think that uh, because the system has some familiarity uh, coming from the compliance um, system to this new tracking and monitoring system, I think that helped and we try to keep it. Similar, but also the changes they also make sense. And so the feedback that we've been getting has been that this is more user friendly for sure and um, allows for the work to be done in a more efficient manner. So again, we hope that this is the case for you. Um, I do question. Thank you, Sinja. Appreciate it. Um, Tracy, are virtual programs required to provide snacks? Yes, you are. Um, all programs funded with 21st Century um, need to provide snacks. And so if you have a question about what that can look like, please reach out. I think Char is your regional consultant. Um, there's been a couple of folks reaching out about that and we can work together to ensure that you have some options. But yeah, please reach out to um, Char um, Tra uh, Tracy about that. Yes, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Desiree. Um, do you have any thoughts, comments, advice that you want to stress with after school going virtual or remote? Um, yes, Caroline, my suggestion would be um, if you're finding the transition challenging as you're trying to find different resources um, to engage your students um, outside of what you would be doing in person, um, you can always again reach out to your regional consultant or um, reach out to your fellow um, grantees. A, a number of folks are doing some great things in the field um, with regards to virtual programming. I actually observed several um, since uh, the beginning of the school year. So um, again, between your regional consultant or reaching out to other grantees, um, that, that would be my recommendation just so you can get some feedback um, or some suggestions. Um, I know Reynoldsburg City, um, I attended their um, one of their programming um, sessions and um, it's they actually um, for their um, enrichment activity, they did something with uh, financial literacy in one room and then if they they had another room where students were doing Zumba and they just did a round robin to make sure everyone got a chance to participate. Um, so that was just an example of different things that folks are doing. Um, the academic piece is a little different because um, staff aren't working um, in person with students, but I believe that there are opportunities with Zoom, for example, to do breakout rooms. So if you have staff working with specific students on homework or different activities, then you can use that feature as well. So those are just some things I can think of off the top of my head, but please feel free to reach out to me or your regional consultant offline. Um, as well as anyone else that you're you comfortable connecting with that's in um, your in the field so that you can get some additional support. And so with that, um, I'm going to close out and say on behalf of the 21st Century team led by Shannon Teague, our assistant director, um, we thank you all for your time this afternoon. Um, we finished right on time 15 minutes early. That's been the common theme amongst all four trainings. This is my last training and so uh, feel free to reach out after this with any questions. Again, expect an update with the slides and the recording by early next week. And we hope you all have a wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you.